Odin property processors are the code that tells Odin what data to display and what attributes are associated with that data. This means that creating a custom property processor can allow you to alter the properties that are shown in the inspector. This is done without altering the original code in any way and works with third-party code where you may not have access to the source code. This opens the door to a wide range of possibilities of what can be done or what can be created with Odin, as property processors let you define your own rules for how properties are made, both globally or just for select types. In this video, we want to give just a few possible examples of what can be done with a custom property processor. The first example that we'll look at is injecting a property that doesn't exist in the original code into the inspector. We'll also look at using a property processor to add a button to the inspector. And the last example this video will look at is using a property processor to hide a member of a class or reorder the members in an inspector. For this video, I'll be using a script with three strings and three integers. While simple, this should be plenty to show the usefulness of property processors. To get started, we need to create a new class, and I'm going to do that in a new script that I'll call sample property processor. Opening the script, the first thing we need to do is add a couple namespaces. We need to add serenix.odinspector and serenix.odinspector.editor. Next, we need to change what the script inherits from to Odin property processor. We can then delete the start and update functions as we won't be needing them. At this point, you may notice an error. This is because we are required to implement the function process member properties. This function takes in a list of inspector property infos, which is the list that we will be modifying to alter the way Odin processes properties. But before we go any further, it's a good idea to narrow the scope of the property processor. To restrict the processor to a single class, we can add a generic parameter at the end of the class definition with a target class, like so. However, if the property processor should also be used on classes that inherit from a particular class, we can add a generic type parameter after the class name and after Odin property processor. We can then restrict T to classes that inherit from sample class or any class by adding the keyword where followed by T semicolon and the type. For our first example, and based off questions on the devdoc discord, let's imagine we want to reorder some properties. In this case, the target class has three strings called top, middle, and bottom. Let's move the bottom string to the top of the inspector. Now, of course, there are multiple ways to do this, but one way is to use a for loop to loop through the list of property infos. We can then check the name of each property, and if the name equals bottom, we can then insert that property at the start of the list. We will also need to remove the original property info entry from the list. We can do this by using remove at and remembering that the list has one more element due to our insertion, so we need to remove the i plus one entry. If you forget to remove the property info, or in later examples, if we add two properties with the same name, we will get errors. In Odin version 2.1.10, this will be fixed, so the duplicate entries will not throw errors. If we let Unity compile, we can now see that the bottom string is placed at the top of the inspector, as expected. With that working, let's move on to a second example. It is also possible to add buttons to the inspector with a property processor. This could be done by creating an additional property processor class, but for simplicity, I'm going to keep building up the same processor. To add a button, we need to add a delegate to the list of property infos, and we can do that by calling delegate. There are several overloads for this function, but the simplest requires two parameters. The first is the text that will appear on the button. In this case, I'm just going to print something to the console, so I'll label the button print hello. The second parameter is the delegate that will define the behavior when the button is pressed. In this case, using a Lambda expression, I'll call debug.log to print a message to the console. Now it's not required, but to further show what can be done, we can add attributes to the injected properties. We can do this by adding a third parameter that creates a new box group with a label of injected. Property processors can also be used to add values to the inspector. To keep things simple, we can add a value that is the sum of the three integers in the sample class script. This can be done by calling add value on the property infos list. Once again, this method has several overloads, but the simplest requires three parameters. The first is the name of the value, 
In my case, I'm going to call it injected property. The second parameter is the getter and allows us to define how the value of the new property will be set. Once again, using a lambda expression, we can get a reference to the instance of sample class using the keyword ref, like so. Then we can define an expression that will sum the values of the three integers. Next, for the setter, we can use a blank lambda expression as we aren't using this property to set the value of another property. But we must include two arguments, one for the sample class instance and one for the sum of the values. Now this is good enough to add a value to the inspector, but once again we can go a bit further and add a box group attribute. This keeps the injected property grouped with the button that we added earlier. Letting Unity compile, we can now see the injected property, and if we change the values of the original integers, the new property changes accordingly. Let's look at one more example of adding a value with a property processor. This is a little bit more complicated, but in this case, I want to show how to use a setter to control the value of another property. So let's imagine that you have an integer that you want to set the value using an enum. To do this, we can inject an enum property. Once again, we'll do this with the property infos dot add value, and I'll give the new value the name of injected enum. We then need to create the getter, and we'll do this with a reference to sample class, and then cast the value of the first integer to an enum, like so. We want to set the value of the integer to match the enum, and this is done with the second parameter, which is the setter. Just like the previous example, we need two arguments. The first is a reference to the sample class, and the second is the enum itself. We can then cast the enum to an integer and set value one in sample class to that integer value. I'll also add an enum toggle buttons attribute for ease of use and add the enum to our injected box group. Letting Unity compile again, we can see that changing the enum changes value one as well as the sum of the integers. Likewise, notice that changing the integer directly will change the value of the enum. Since the enum is now standing in for the integer value, we can remove the integer from the inspector. We can do this by calling propertyinfos.remove and use the name value1 as an input argument. Going back to Unity, we can see that the property value1 is no longer visible in the inspector. The examples shown here are just a small sampling of what can be done with custom property processors. The options are nearly limitless. Also, much like custom attribute processors, they can allow modifications of inspectors for third-party tools. They are useful even if you don't have access to the source code or in cases where you may not want to alter the original code. We hope this video was interesting and better yet, useful for your project. If you have questions or comments about the video or property processors, drop them down below or come over to the DevDog Discord. And until next time, happy game designing.